Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Ah, ah Mia is already, I mean, uh, yeah, Mia and, and Ava are here already. Good morning, Ava. <coughs> oh, nice. Beautiful. Well, today, today we're celebrating a feast in the church. And it is the feast of Transfiguration. The feast of the Transfiguration of our Lord. Okay. And it's also the birthday of Daddy. Who? <laughs> what is that? What's she saying now? Lala. Yeah, Tita Lala. My sister La Angela is celebrating her birthday today. So happy birthday. Okay, so Transfiguration. This is the story where our Lord took three very... Um, special apostles, Peter, James, and John, to the mountain, to the mountain. And he shows them a magnificent scene. <clears throat> okay. By the way, this gospel is still from St. Matthew, chapter 17, verses 1 to 9. So Jesus took Peter, James, and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. He was transfigured. What does transfigure mean? Huh? What is trans? Huh? Chevelle? Change. Yes, trans means change. Figure means? Figure. Huh? What? Appearance. appearance, okay? Appearance, or the way that he uh, all of a sudden uh, uh, manifests himself to them. Okay? So this particular story, the transfiguration, was when our Lord changed his appearance before his apostles and showed his glorified state. Okay? Uh, as the gospel here says, his clothes became white as light. So you can imagine our Lord being radiant, glowing, right? Glowing. So it was, it was uh, not the normal, uh, natural appearance of any human being. Okay? So he was glowing, he was radiant, and he was uh, uh, in a completely, a completely different state. So this was transfiguration. And then he was accompanied by Moses on one side and Elijah on another side. Right? They appeared with uh, with Jesus before his glory. Okay? What 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 was the significance of Moses and Elijah appearing with our Lord? in this particular uh, uh, miracle that he allowed his three apostles to witness. What do Moses and Elijah signify as far as uh, the church is concerned? The law and the uh, Jacob, okay, the law and the prophets. Okay? So Moses is the lawgiver, right? He was the one who gave the Jews the Ten Commandments. It was communicated through Moses. And Moses drew up, you know, uh, 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 for the Jewish people, uh, the, um, the implications of the law and, you know, what it means for them. Okay? And the prophets is represented by Elijah, right? Uh, so what, what is this in relation to Jesus Christ? Okay. Well, both of this, the law and the prophets, were, uh, were, are now in the person of Jesus Christ, okay, the fulfillment of the new covenant uh, uh, of the law, the new law, and the fulfillment of what the prophets have prophesied from the beginning of time about Jesus Christ. So, showing his apostles this kind of a... A, a transformation of himself in a glorified state is like making a statement to them, telling them that, yes, I am indeed the fulfillment of the law 
and the prophets, that I am indeed the Messiah, that I am indeed the one you have been waiting for. And, and furthermore, furthermore, the real completeness of this fulfillment is when, as we say in the creed, and as we believe expressed in the creed, right, we will all be glorified with God in heaven. So that means that, that this life is not the be-all and end-all of existence, that we were not created for this life, that our hope is in the resurrection. Okay? That in fact, in fact, the resurrection, the Easter of our lives is what we are all aiming for, is what we are all aspiring for is where all our struggles to become saints is focused on. It is to live with glory with God forever in heaven. Okay? So that's the, that's the significance of transfiguration. That is what this whole uh, uh, miracle we are looking at today actually means. Okay, now... The other significance of this, which is all part of the, uh, the whole um, significance of, of, of our Christian life, is that our Lord wanted to show the apostles His glorified state okay, in preparation for His crucifixion and death. See? He has been talking about his crucifixion, his imminent crucifixion, he was going to die a very brutal, violent death. Now, to help his apostles prepare for that eventuality of his crucifixion, he shows them his glorified state. As though telling them, look, I will go through a horrible death. I'm going to be crucified to save you from your sins. But this is the way it's going to end up. This is the way it's going to end up. I am going to resurrect as I had promised after three days. And this is the situation you're going to witness afterwards. My glorified state. My glorified resurrected state. Okay? So our Lord was already giving them a foretaste of the resurrection. Our Lord was giving them a foretaste of what it was going to be like after the crucifixion and that therefore they should pin their hopes they should pin their hopes on that resurrection rather than get stuck with you know the violence of the crucifixion okay so our lord is trying to tell the apostles yes we will go through some sufferings I will die for you. I'm going to die and cru get crucified in a very violent way. But let us not stop there. Okay? Let us not think that that is the end. Because there is much more to come after the crucifixion. Much more to come. And there's going to be the time of glory. There will be the resurrection. Okay? And this is a preview. What our Lord was showing them was like a preview of that resurrection. So this is the story of transfiguration. Now, how can we apply this to ourselves on, our, on a daily basis? Okay, number one, well, you know, uh, first is this is the truth of our faith. The resurrection, the life of glory in heaven. That's the truth of our faith. And we need to believe in that. That, that is where our hopes are pinned on, right? We, we, we hope to enjoy the glory of heaven after, after years of struggling to become saints on earth, right? We, we try to struggle as much as we can. And that our hope is that we are going to resurrect with Jesus Christ. We're going to be living a life of glory in heaven. But that's for the faith that we encourage and we enkindle in our hearts. But on a day-to-day -day basis, on a day-to-day -day basis, how can we remember the transfiguration? How can we transpose the promise of transfiguration in our daily lives. Okay, here are a few ways. Whenever you feel sad, 
Whenever you feel sad, for whatever reason, you get gloomy days, right? And, 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 and gloominess and sadness can be coming from different sources, different reasons. Remember the times when, in the first place, what, what can cause sadness? What can cause sadness? Uh, uh, again, there are many, plenty, uh, immediate causes of sadness, right? But really, really, if you come down to it and you drill down every sort of sadness that, that, that we feel in our soul, it is really a consequence of the loss of God. Okay? It is really a consequence of losing sight of God one way or another. It is really... A cause of lack of focus on the will of God. We become sad because we have focused too much on ourselves, on our needs, on our comforts, on things we like to do and things we like for ourselves. And when we don't get it one way or the other, we feel sadness in our soul. Eh? So how do we overcome that? We overcome that by refocusing our attention on God, on the promise of heaven, on the promise of glory, on the transfiguration that can occur in our lives, the change that can occur in our lives when we refocus our attention on God. Okay? So that is... Our transfiguration, that is the significance of transfiguration for us. That we need, Jesus showed himself to the apostles in a transfigured way in order to make them realize, okay, you will go through some hard times, but this is what you look forward to, the resurrection. Same thing is true in our lives. We, are, we can get sad, we can get disappointed for many reasons, but our hope is in the resurrection. Our hope is to enjoy the life of glory with God in heaven. Okay, here's another transfigure, transfiguration uh, uh, consequence for us. When you feel tempted, when you feel temptations, okay, remember the times when you prayed for grace to overcome your temptations and you won. Okay? Remember the satisfaction of having overcome a particular temptation in your life because you prayed for grace to overcome it and you put the effort to overcome the temptation. That is transfiguration for you. Okay? That is transfiguration. So those times when you got tempted by the devil in a hard way and you prayed for grace, and the grace of God manifested in your soul by way of helping you overcome the temptation, then you got transfigured at that point. See? What else? Uh, when you have trouble understanding your school work, okay, now we apply this to this, the kids, okay? uh, just as an example. You're having trouble with your school work. You can't understand it. Okay? But then... You remember the joy of learning things. You remember the, the ecstatic feeling that you had when, when you understood your school work. Right? When you understood your lessons. Well, that is your transfiguration. Especially if you prayed that the Holy Spirit enlightened you to help you understand your school work. And that happens also not only for school work. When you, when you felt like you wanted to rebel against what your parents are telling you, but instead of showing disobedience and rebellion, you prayed for the grace to understand your parents' will. You prayed to understand and appreciate what your parents are telling you to do. And that is your transfiguration. If that helped you obey, and do what they're asking you to do, that is your transfiguration. 
See? So, when you commit sin, and let's say you fall into the misfortune of committing sin, remember the joy you had after having made a good confession. Remember all the benefits that you had in the past after you had the same experience, but you went to confession and you did a very good, sincere confession. Remember the joy and the peace that that brought to you. Then, that will be your transfiguration. When we are sad as we are these days because we are so deprived of receiving the Holy Eucharist uh, as we used to in, in, uh, when churches were open and we could, when we could go to Mass every day. When you're sad because you could not receive our Lord physically, remember those days when you were able to receive Him daily. Remember that experience when we were able to receive our Lord intimately into our bodies. Okay? The body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ coming into us physically and spiritually at Holy Communion. Remember those days. So you see, every day, every day of our lives, there can be experiences of the transfiguration. Okay? We can look back in gratitude to the many good things, the many good graces that God has given us all throughout our lives on a daily basis. And that is the way that we really live up to the spirit of transfiguration. That is really the way that this feast that we celebrate today becomes a daily feast for all of us. It becomes an everyday thing, not only on August 6th of every year. Okay? So let us put our hopes, let us live our lives hoping, hoping for this transfiguration, hoping to live with God in glory as He promised in heaven at the end of our own days. Okay, that's it for us, folks. Have a good day, everybody. Ooh, our friend JC from, uh, uh, Dr. JC Parenas from Japan is, uh, is with us today. And, uh, oh, uh, Senen Wokin is with us too. Uh, an uncle of mine from uh, West Covina, I think. Okay, well, thank you. Have a good feast day, everybody. If you can have the opportunity to go to Mass, that would be a nice thing today. If you can find a church to go to Mass to. Uh, as far as we are concerned, our family, this morning we're preparing to go to confession. Today is going to be a good time to go to confession, so we're going to do that. We're going to head out and uh, go to confession today. Okay, have a good day, everybody. See you tomorrow, hopefully. Bye. Bye.